Hello, this is Postdoc Chronicles week number 105 and today as you can see here, we will talk about uh, on the Nintendo Switch, Demon Steel, the spiritual successor of Demon's Crush on the uh, uh, TurboGrafx-16. So the, both of these are uh, pinball games, so I really like love pinball, so I'm like hunting down every uh, pinball games in existence and uh, Devil's Crush even though I never had like a Turbo Graphic 16 this one is like a famous uh, classic pinball game with you know an insane, insane occult demonic theme so it never went you know to like Nintendo consoles like the SNES and stuff like that because you know it's very bloody it's very demonic you know you, you fight demons and stuff using your ball using your pinball so it was made by the com a company called Natsat so before this before Devil's Crush I believe in 1989 they also made a, a lesser uh, uh, made a pinball game it's still good but not as good as devil's crush called the uh, alien crush you know and the, the 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 thing that let me start it here because it always goes to the but yeah maybe we can use it as a background but the thing i don't like about aliens crush crush is like it transfers between uh, two boards just like you know if you played the um, Pokemon pinball on the Game Boy Color, so it's like that. I can forgive it on the Game Boy Color because it's a lesser, uh, it's a it's a weaker system. But on the uh, you know Turbo Graphic 16, a 16 bit, I would have uh, expected it to be better because they were able to pull it off in um, in Devil's Crush. But but anyway, yeah, Devil's Crush, like I said, is a very nice pinball. Only one. Uh, table but uh, three layers and yeah it was made um long ago it was later remade in uh, uh in a uh, mega drive you know um, uh, sega uh sega genesis it was made into it was called so you know the westerns are very afraid of to use the words demons or devil they don't they didn't call it a devil's crush they instead they called it a dragon's fury still the same graphics you know they can go away with a dragon title because there's like a, a lady that transforms into a dragon in on the on the game but yeah so it was on the Mega Drive and then on the uh, Sega Genesis. But the thing about that version is that the, the graphics are a bit weaker than uh, Turbo Graphics 16. Aside from the, you know, the ex special tables, when you go to the bonus tables, they are actually well made on the Sega Genesis and on the uh, on the Mega Drive compared to the Turbo Graphics. But overall, the graphics here is uh, a bit better. And we're talking about that because on the Nintendo Switch, like uh, last uh, December, this went uh, out of my radar because usually uh, December, uh, Christmas break, I'm in our province. I usually don't have access to the internet. So, you know, I don't usually know the upcoming games. But December 2019, Demon still came out. I wasn't able to get it, but which is, uh, which is just fine because uh, it's currently on sale. So instead of like being uh, $20, it's now like I think around uh, $13 until August 20. So I got it, um, Demon Stilt on the Nintendo Switch. And again, this is the spiritual successor of um, Devil's Crush very insane like a pinball table with uh, very insane mechanics you know other pinball tables like uh, pinball fx or the pinball arcade or stern pinball that makes the transition to be video game usually their their uh, mission still is to be as close to a real pinball as possible but however there are some pinball games like for example a uh, pokemon pinball devil's crush or uh, the demon still to where they really embrace you know the video game mechanic they really use stuff that you cannot um, emulate you can't experience in an actual pinball game so for example there are like uh, demons walking around and stuff like that and in here, in here it's even more insane because there are like bullet hell mechanics you know that, that you have to avoid like sometimes the enemies will like spray an uh, in insane amount of like bullet patterns it looks like bullet hell and it will like divert the directions of your ball so you have to like maneuver around it uh, very nicely and again uh, just like any pinball game on the on the Nintendo Switch it supports a a, uh, a Tate mode, you know, um, a, 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 uh, uh, a standing up mode or something so that you can experience the entirety of the table. But yeah, basically, Demon Stealth is the spiritual successor of um, Devil's Crush, and uh, both of them are really, uh, really very good. I like them, okay? But anyway, yeah, let's go to uh, Post the Chronicles. So, um, not uh, so much uh, progress um, uh, last week. Um, I'm still stuck in the, in the you know, um, a spe the specific dire configuration not running in the, in the grid. So, one of the things I tried is that I was thinking maybe the, the one of the main difference between local and grid is I'm running 1 million events on the grid while I'm only testing like a few amounts of events like 10 or 100 locally just to test if it works so like I tried maybe what if I run maybe the 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 problem arises when you know you go to a large number of events so I tried something like 10,000 locally but the, the problem is every time I run uh, not, uh, I increase the number of events past 100 I always get a broken pipe error you know PTI is running PTI is running and then it gets a broken pipe error very, very weird so and I still keep on repeating that again the three things run 
uh, fine locally at least when you decrease the number of events. But when you use something, for example, like 10,000, I can't really confirm if it still runs because of the broken pipe problem. So I don't know if it's with my internet or something. But yeah, usually broken pipe happens when you leave, you know, uh, the, the terminal on without accessing it and then because, you know, because of security reasons when you're not uh, using it, then it, it lags off uh, or it disconnects automatically. But it should be exempted when, you know, it's running the program, something like a PTA, for example, is generating events. But in this case, um, it's still doing that. It is still um, uh, disconnecting. It's still having some broken pipe problems. But yeah, that's it. And then in the MUED project, so the, the like I said, uh, any, like I said before, any KK Quark's uh, initial state uh, paired with, let's say, singlet or doublet, I can't run on my laptop. So, um, um, Roberto basically asked for the framework again. I gave it, I linked it to him on the Dropbox. I commented out all the stuff, stuff that I'm running currently. So, my laptop is still currently running. Uh, it, I think it will take very long because, you know, every a single like uh, parameter that we're scanning like it takes like around that uh, two days plus you know and then we'll be looking at a lot of pairs of our parameters so so i think it will take a long time but so far the the parameters that i've run they they are they are uh they are consistent with the results that john has but we still haven't i still haven't arrived at the at the pair of um at the pair of parameters where uh the 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 paper of john uh, stopped you know so that's 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 where we're interested but interested in but of course i'm starting in the uh, known parameters that John already tested ju just for a sanity check to know that we're, we really have, you know, a consistent result. And so the thing is, the problem is that, so, so initially I start, started with like uh, 50,000 events that I'm checking per uh, per scan. But the thing is, some some combinations of um, of uh, parameters will take a huge amount of, um, of um, disk space. So what I did is, so right now, so I have like a few parameters where I tested the uh, 50,000 where, where, where the memory is not that huge, the required memory. But then some of the other pairs of a parameters, I had to uh, reduce it to 30,000 because otherwise the, the run would stop. It will say uh, you don't have memory anymore because, you know, like I said, I'm using my laptop. You know, I miss my PC back in the University of Witwatersrand where I usually run, run stuff when it needs to be a, when it needs to generate a huge amount of um, output file. But yeah, that's, that, that's the limitation so far. But I think 30,000, yeah, so far it still, it still gives a sensible uh, uh, result like, Things that should be excluded, uh, it's, it, it, it is still uh, excluding it, so it's fine. And then also um, later tonight, you know, um, the pack email I believe um, yesterday, you know, so we, so we will talk about like we will uh, do some cash up. So I believe it will be with some of his other PhD students as well. So we'll meet like at 7 p.m. later and then eat dinner somewhere because in South Africa the lockdown has been. Um, relax to um, level two so instead of like level three like uh, for a few months now um, it's now level two i believe the community infected here is now like around five hundred thousand, top five in the world but on the positive side around four hundred thousand already recovered so i think that's the reason why they're uh, relaxing already the um the restriction but of course uh, when we go out we're still gonna be wearing a face mask and all that okay and also um later tonight so since it's tuesday like i mentioned before we have a florida uh, reading club with uh phd students from university of florida and um this week i had to read um chapter 27 of uh quantum field theory and standard model by uh, matthew schwartz because i'm the one assigned to discuss the topic so chapter 27 is all about um gluon scattering and how to calculate you know um, 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 scattering uh, amplitudes for um, gluon gluon to gluon gluon for example and the, the thing is if you do it with the usual techniques that you learn for example to calculate the e minus e plus to mu mu minus mu plus scattering for example the, the, the usual you know um, easiest example when you go to um, QED you usually you know um, use these things called the uh, trace formalism you assign some uh, you assign some expressions to to the vertices and to the legs of the Feynman diagram, and then you you use the Feynman rules to consequently calculate the corresponding um, um, amplitude. The thing is, when you apply it to like a gluon gluon scattering, just just for example, the two to two. The the problem with um, QCD is that uh, the gluon itself carries the color charge. You know, so unlike the photon in QED, the photon is not electrically charged, so it does not interact with itself, so to speak, right? Because it's not charged. However, in QCD, the the corresponding charge is the color charge. The gluon also has that. Okay, so so the gluon is also charged with respect to the charge in the strong interaction. So 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 what that implies is. 
you will have interactions with the gluons. So you get uh, Feynman diagrams, for example, a, a, a four vertex diagram. You have a point where uh, four gluons are coming out. Then you have the usual uh, uh, two to two uh, uh, gluon, gluon, gluon to gluon, gluon scattering and all those things. And, and once you do the calculation using the trace formulation, you end up with something like a thousand terms. And I don't know if anyone has done that. And it, it when you simplify it, it, it it turns out that the, that the final expression is still simple, okay? But when you use the trace formalism that you learned in QED, it will take you a long time to solve for it. And so chapter 27, it focuses on this thing known as the uh, spin helicity formalism. It's like another introduction of notation that works very well when you're dealing with the uh, particles that are like massless, which of course is uh, a gluon, for example. So, so it's, for example, when you look at the results of a QED, when you take the uh, high energy limit, the relativistic limit, when the, the, the masses of the, the electrons and the muons are, are, are equal to zero, you get a result of a of of the of the uh, uh, the m okay the, the the amplitude from using the trace formalism. If you apply the spin helicity formalism to it, it will be like a straightforward step. You end up with the same result. Okay, uh, of course, as long as you assume that m e and m u is equal to zero, so it works very powerful. Uh, it works uh, well with the blue ones because blue ones are massless in the first place, and then when you apply it then it really simplifies the calculation uh, as opposed to a uh, trace uh, formalism. So so that's what I'm that's what I'm going to be discussing tonight. So I was planning to I didn't finish the chap the entire chapter yet. I was planning to like read the rest, you know, um like tonight for example, but since we'll be having dinner um later I'm I'm going to I'm going to message the guys that I want because of course typically we don't also discuss like a single chapter in a single sitting sometimes we assign two people to it or sometimes we divide it into two weeks so I'm gonna tell the guys that uh, maybe somebody, somebody else can take care of the second part or or um, uh, maybe we can uh, divide it into two you know but yeah so that's that's what we're gonna do later but anyway yeah uh, next week I'm gonna update you or hopefully this week I'm gonna able to record them um, week 106 this is week 105 so with regards to what uh, the, what 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 will come out with the uh, catch up with the uh, Deepak and all his other um, PhD students, but so far yeah, in an email Deepak asked me if I've tried using uh, uh, to generate UFO model files from a like Lagrangian. So I I I did I did a tutorial of that before. I believe it's it's done in Mathematica. I told Deepak, Deepak I did a tutorial before, but I I don't think I can I can recall it anymore because I haven't actually used it in an actual research setting. So. If ever we're gonna use it, I have to reread. I have to like look up, look up the, the tutorial again to relearn it. You know, because if you don't use like something every day, then you don't you don't really have to go back to it and relearn it again. But yeah, anyway, this has been Postal Chronicles week number one hundred five. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and bye bye.